Hey guys, Lazarus here from Edge3D CGI and before we go ahead and get started with this tutorial I wanted to give you guys a general introduction to the tutorial and also Edge3D CGI to tell you guys what we are trying to create and what we are all about. If you guys wanted to skip the introduction and just get on with the tutorial there should be an annotation so you can click that and get straight to the tutorial. So basically, I'm just going to give you guys a general walkthrough of our website that you can see on the screen at the moment. We're a newly created um, a 3D website slash YouTube channel. And basically what we are trying to create is very similar to CG Pro's YouTube channel where you're most likely watching this tutorial. But instead of dealing with inspirational videos, we're trying to create a channel where you can find tutorials for all your needs. So we do have tutorials from our in-house authors, such as me, who create tutorials. And we also have um, authors from all around YouTube who create tutorials for us and also who we use their, where we use their tutorials from uh, to try to build up a massive channel with loads of tutorials. So on our website, you can find um, tutorials that we already have in 3D Studio Max, Maya, After Effects, Blender, Texturing, and we also have a coming soon section that we're currently working on so you can see what we're going to have later on down the line we're also going to deal with some programming in C++ and Python and as you can tell we have a section for inspirational videos most of them are from the CG Bros so you can find their stuff on our YouTube channel if you're watching this on our YouTube channel make sure you go ahead and check out CG Bros we also deal with news so such as 3D um, industry news uh, that you can find down here and we also have a Facebook page um, so make sure you go ahead and like us if you enjoy what we are trying to do here so without any further ado let's go ahead and get started with the tutorial and before we go ahead and start creating anything I'll give you guys an, in an introduction to this as well so basically this tutorial is going to be for the complete beginners or the very beginners who just started out modeling. If you only just started out modeling and you're still not very comfortable with um, working in 3D space, then I do advise you watching this. If you're fairly intermediate, then you might not learn anything new. So the first thing we're going to do is, as you can tell, I've got two models here and they look very similar. The only difference is that one of them is a low poly version and the other one is a high poly version. And you might have heard these terms before and you're not sure what these exactly mean. So I'll just show you the first um, low poly version. And as you can tell, this is what it looks like. And a poly is basically a polygon. So that's a face on the model. And it's a measure of how detailed the uh, model is so for example if I just to go to display heads up display and go to display poly count as you can tell if I select the low poly model it's only about 8,000 faces which is not that low poly but it's fairly low poly compared to the high poly version that we have here so if I go ahead and select that that's about 300,000 faces so that will take a lot more computing power uh, to display and also to render so for example for games we would prefer to use a low poly version so in this tutorial we're going to go ahead and create the low poly version because it takes um, less tools and techniques to create so you don't have to worry about adding in all extra edge loops and smoothing and so on so in this tutorial we're just going to go through the very basics um, and then later on down the line, once you're more comfortable in working in 3D space and so on, we'll start creating more advanced models in um, smooth mode and so on. So I'll just show you guys one more example. As you can tell in the high poly version, we get a very nice bevel down the edges. So this will give us a very nice highlight um, on the model. And if you have a look on the low poly version, we don't get a highlight at all so that's the reason why once we go ahead and render this basically it will look a lot nicer and also all the curves and everything is a lot smoother that will make it look a lot better okay so let's go ahead and get started with the tutorial I'm just gonna go ahead and delete this low poly version and also the high poly version I'm just gonna go ahead and delete both of them and before we go ahead and get started I'm just gonna go ahead and turn off my display so the poly count and also we're going to go ahead and go to display 
and UI elements. And if I click this dotted line, this will tear off this window. So as you can tell, we'll come into a separate window and I'm just gonna to go to show all UI elements. So this way I can go ahead and reset my workspace. And I'm also gonna to go to display and turn on the grid and hopefully I'll get something like your screen. Now what we're gonna do is we can turn some of this stuff off so it's out of our way. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off our command line because we're not doing any programming. You're gonna turn off the rain slider to time slider because we're not doing any animation. I'm also gonna go ahead and turn off the tool settings because we can get that up on me later. I'm also gonna click this icon to go to full screen and hopefully I should get something like your screen. Now if you just started out, you're gonna to have to go to the polygons tab and the polygons shelf. And now hopefully our screen looks exactly the same. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and create the base of our model. So we're gonna go ahead and use a cylinder. And also in the create tab, you should have um, interactive creation turned on. So just make sure this is checked on and that way it will be exactly the same. So I'm gonna go ahead and click our cylinder and then we're gonna go ahead and drag on out in around the middle of our grid. So I'm clicking drag and then let go, click and drag again to give it a height. And as you can tell, we got our cylinder. Now, as you can notice in our channel box, this will pop up. And what we're gonna do in the X direction, we're gonna zero this out. And this way it will move it exactly into the center of our grid. Like so. Okay, so we got a base. And in the inputs, if you go to poly cylinder one, you can find the settings that we added for the cylinder. So you can always go back and change the radius. If you hold down middle mouse button and drag, you can change the radius. You can change the height. Okay. And we also can change the subdivision axis. For this one, we're gonna turn this up to about 30 just to get a smooth version. Okay, so we got a base selected. And hopefully you already know how to move around and that. So I don't wanna go through into that much beginner details, but basically it's holding down Alt and left mouse button to rotate, Alt and middle mouse button to move around, and then Alt and right button to zoom in, okay? So if I, we can also click our model or our selected object and press F, and that way it will rotate around and move around our object. So now that we have our base, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and duplicate this cylinder. So let's go ahead and hit Control D to duplicate. And now I'm just gonna press W to move this up. And then scale by pressing R on my keyboard. I'm gonna scale this down a little bit. I'm also gonna go ahead and move this down a bit more. So you get these two sort of steps. So the next thing we're gonna create is we're gonna create the cylinders that are gonna come up, so sort of support panels. And what I'm gonna do is if you hold down the space and then go to modify, make live, this will make this object basically act like our grid. So whenever we go ahead and drag an object, it will drag it on our shape and not on the grid, okay? You can also do this by going up here to modify and make live, but I kind of like to use the shortcut of holding down this and it will bring up this fairly complicated menu, but once you start using it, it's not that complicated. So if you hold down space and then go to modify, left mouse button and drag to make live, then you should get the same result. So once we have that, we're gonna go ahead and go to our cylinder and we're gonna go ahead in our top view and again, changing viewports, you can do it many ways. You can press space once and if you're in the right viewport, then it will come out and go back in. So I can press space to go in and out, but I don't really like using this. So instead the way I change viewports is by holding down space and then in the mayor icon, if you left click and drag, you can go into different viewports, okay? And I find it's the fastest way of doing it. And once you get used to it, it's very quick to change viewports, okay? So I'm now I'm just gonna go ahead and go into my top view. So let go and 
there we go. I just went into my top viewport. So we've still got our cylinder selected, so I'm gonna go ahead and drag one out in one of these faces. Now I can gonna go into my side view and zoom out a bit so I can drag out a height. I'm gonna drag it out fairly high, probably roughly around there. Okay, so once I have that, I'm gonna go back into my top view. I'm just gonna go ahead and move this. Roughly in the center of that face. Now a little different way you can also do this is I can go ahead and click this icon and hold down once I made this on live. So we're just going to go to modify, make live and then go to modify, make not live. And what I'm going to do is select a cylinder, make sure that I got this axis selected and then hold down X to snap this to the center, I mean to this um, grid point here. I'm also going to go ahead and turn on our wireframe by pressing this icon. And now we got this exactly in the center. So once I have that, basically what I wanna achieve is that I want more cylinders like this in every face in here, okay? So I basically just wanna duplicate it and move it around. Now, you can do this the hard way. So you can go ahead and press Control D to duplicate and then move it here and then move it up. Now this wouldn't be a very good way of doing it. So instead what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and move a pivot point of this object into the center of this cylinder. Now what this will let us do is that when we go ahead and rotate, if you notice if I press E to rotate now and rotate it, it will rotate around the center of that object. Now if you go ahead and move the pivot point here and we rotate it, then the object will pivot or rotate around the center of that point, okay? So basically, let's go ahead and do that and it will be easier to go ahead and explain. So I'm just gonna go ahead and press insert on my keyboard and that way it will bring up this little icon which means you're in the moving pivot mode. So you can go ahead and move our pivot point there. Now you can do this manually again, which wouldn't be a good idea. So instead of moving this manually, what we're gonna do is we're gonna hold down V on our keyboard to snap to a vertex. So I'm gonna hold down V and then middle mouse button, click in the center of that object, okay? And that way it will snap to that vertex, which will be exactly in the center. Now we can press insert again to come out of our uh, modify pivot mode. And as you can tell, if I go and rotate this object now, it will rotate around that point. So I'm gonna go ahead and undo this. And what I want is basically, I want this to rotate around here. And if we look in our rotate Y, if we change this to about minus 12, most likely it will sit exactly in the center. So now we can go ahead and duplicate this again and change this to minus 24 and so on. But this would again take a little bit too much time. So instead what we're gonna do is now that we've rotated it, we can press Shift D instead of Control D. And what it's gonna do is gonna rotate and it will also, I mean, it will duplicate and it will also rotate it an extra 12 degrees again. So whatever our last action was. So now we can just go ahead and Shift D all the way around and it will duplicate and rotate 12 degrees each time. And bam, there we go. So we got all our cylinders moved around. So it's a very easy way to go ahead and duplicate multiple objects. So once we have this, what I'm also gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and give this a, a little base at the bottom. So we could go ahead and create a new cylinder and move it in the right place. But instead we're gonna start to get your head around reusing assets, okay, or objects that you already have. So for example, we already have a cylinder here. So what I can do is I can just duplicate this. I can go ahead and scale this down, probably around that big. And I obviously want this a little bit thicker so you can go ahead and scale this up. Now that we have that, we can go ahead and move this down to the base where I want this, like so. And now what we can do is obviously go around again and duplicate this. Now there's a different way 
of duplicating. And again, we need to go ahead and move our pivot point. So I'm going to press insert, hold down V, middle mouse button, drag in the middle, and press insert again. So we could go ahead and duplicate this again and then rotate it 12 degrees. And then go ahead and keep doing that with the Shift D. Or you can also go ahead and use the Edit Duplicate Special command. So if you press this little square next to it, this will bring this up. So we can change many settings here, but we're going to go ahead and just use the Rotate command. So it's going to be Rotate Y. So we're going to go ahead and this is X, this is Y, and this is Z. So we're going to need it to rotate 12 degrees on the Y axis okay and it's going to be a copy not an instance and also it's going to be a parent so it's going to probably group them together and the scale make sure that it's untouched so it's going to be one all the way around and translate is going to be zero as well now you can change the number of copies here so let's go ahead and try 10 and see what happens so I'm just going to go ahead and press apply and as you can tell it duplicated all the way around around our pivot. Now we could go ahead and select this again and let's say change this to 20 and apply again and I think that was a little bit too much so I'm just going to close this window and go ahead and delete these ones that we don't need the extra ones. So we already had one there, we already had one here, here so I'm now just selecting them rings and deleting them. So this is another way of duplicating many objects. Okay, the duplicate special. So now that we have them rings, I basically want these rings all the way up here on the top as well because we're gonna have something sitting up here. So what we're gonna do, instead of creating them again, like I said, we're gonna go ahead and reuse these assets and just duplicate them all up and move them up. Now I'll also introduce you to the idea of the um, outline, which is this. So if you click this icon, it will come up. And here you can find all the objects that you created. Now what we are looking for is these little cylinders that sit there. So I'm just gonna hold down shift, left click all the way around to see the ones that I need. And I need that one, that one, and that one. So now I have all of them selected. And we're gonna press control G to group them together. We can also go ahead and name this uh, if you want it to, but we're going to leave it as group one. So now I'm going to press W on my keyboard to go into my move tool and I'm going to go ahead and press control D to duplicate this group and now we can move them all up. So I want them up here and we got our little caps for these as well. Great. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create the little rim sort of thing for this or we can also actually use this instead so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this and duplicate that with control D and then move this up and I want it a little bit smaller so, so I'm just going to move this up in the right place and then press R to scale I'm going to go ahead and scale this in around that much okay that's great so once we have this, we're going to go ahead and duplicate this one more time. Control D, move this up and then scale it in. And now what we're going to do, we're going to create the top of this. So that sort of sphere that you've seen before. So what I'm going to do is we're going to go into our side view. And we can go ahead and use a sphere for this. So here's my sphere. I'm going to go ahead and drag this out roughly around the center. And actually it would probably be better if you'd done this in the top view. So let's go ahead and do that. So again, in the center, just drag one out. And then now I'm going to go into my side view and move this up. Now we only need half of it and not all of it because if I set this on the top, then the other half will be sitting on the bottom and I don't want that. So what we're going to do is go into our right click the mesh, go into our face mode and then we're going to go ahead and select these bottom faces and just press delete to delete them so that way we'll only have this and now what I'm going to do is I want this to sit exactly in the center so again I'm going to go to translate Z and zero it and also translate X I'm going to zero that as well 
So now I can go ahead and move this down to where I need it. I'm also going to go ahead and scale this up. So it will sit around there roughly. Okay, so we just finished this fit and this is it for this part of the tutorial. I'm kind of going over the time limit that I have. So in the next couple of parts, we're going to go ahead and finish this off and we'll also go ahead and add some extra details to this that you haven't seen in the preview model. So I hope you guys enjoy this tutorial. If you do, please go, come over to our channel at Edge3D CGI if you're not already there and subscribe to us and also make sure you like us on Facebook so I'll see you guys in the next couple of parts.